This year has been a really, really bad year for insert. This team's number two receiver is going to outproduce the alpha wide receiver one. If you just look at dynasty rankings, guys like T Higgins and Jalen Waddle and, and de certainly Devontae Smith will be up there really high. Do we sort of jump the shark with, oh, this guy's a one, one B receiver, not really a two. Look at the release. There's your separation. Wait, wow. Stutter and go, gets by clean. That is unbelievable. May be the greatest catch I've ever seen. This year has been a really, really bad year for insert this team's number two receiver is going to outproduce the alpha wide receiver one or close the gap between the alpha wide receiver one type of predictions on on um, on the team, right? Like I'm thinking about, you know, I think Devonta Smith's a really good player, but like, you know, AJ Brown has been on a tear so far this year. Um, Jalen Waddle, really good player. Tyree Kill is lapping the field for and not just Jalen Waddle, but like literally the field of the NFL. Um, I really like Jahan Dotson, and I think I'm not going to bump Jahan Dotson down on my dynasty rankings for what he's doing right now. I think he'll be fine when the offense sort of crystallizes, but there were people ready to say, oh, yeah, he'll be better than Terry McLaurin this year. And I was like, yo, it's really hard to be better than Terry McLaurin because Terry McLaurin's really freaking good. T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on, honestly. From a process standpoint, what do we do with that information? Because if you just look at dynasty rankings, like guys like T. Higgins and Jalen Waddle and, and de certainly Devontae Smith will be up there really high. Um, but for these guys that are probably, if they stick with their team, stuck as the number – like number two receiver, how do we approach those guys from like a long-term rankings perspective? And and do we sort of jump the shark with, oh, this guy's a one one B receiver, not really a two? That's kind of how I've approached it all along, to be honest, is that I think of who's if you there are certain players that you can you can get that top 15 production, top it's gonna be top 15 to top 20 production. I'll, because you have the strong quarterback mm -hmm. and you have the the primary wide receiver who can win against anybody on any route. And mm -hmm. if you have that combination, then, yeah, I'm okay with T. Higgins being higher up on the board or Jalen Waddle being high up on the board. The difference with Waddle, I would say right now, is that this offense has just like gotten a new toy with their True. running game and how they've expanded it. So it's kind of like Waddle's been left at the side uh, on a certain level, but it, he's also a guy that could deliver that one production if need be. When I looked at Devonta Smith, you watched him at, at Alabama. You watched him early on in his career. Great route runner in terms of like the, the technical skills, good hands, great, good after the catch. But a physical football player on the opposite side of him just pins him to the boundary. Like mm. it's like, yeah, just get over there, you know. And and AJ Brown, you can't do that with. At, you know, Addison, Jordan Addison, similar type of thing. Maybe yeah. a little more physical than Devonta, I would uh, argue. But same mm. thing with, you know, Justin Jefferson. So I'm okay with that as long as you believe the quarterback has a history or skill to support multiple players. Burrow can support multiple guys. You know, I think Matthew Stafford has that ability to to some extent. Um, certainly, Kirk Cousins can. Um, mm. I, I think that there's there's guys if they read progressions there and they can do a little bit off structure and they have the offense that that doesn't have so many personnel alterations that the guys, the support staff is, well, I'm on the field, you know, 20% less than everybody else because we're putting three tight ends in here in all these situations. That's probably part of it. So yeah, I'm game with, I'm game with the one, one a type of stuff. Christian Kirk all along. I feel like Christian Kirk yeah. was going to have near equal stats to, to Ridley, not because he's as good as Ridley, just because he's he's good enough. I think for me, the just the thing I'm taking away from this whole like number two receiver, one B receiver thing is I think that those guys are just so much more at risk when the offense like falls a little bit back for whatever reason. Um, I don't know what your read is on the Eagles right now, like what's going on there, but I think we can agree that 
Jalen Hurts is not playing his best football so far. They're working in a new offense, and it's just been a tick off. You know, Devonta Smith has been the one to take the step back there when it's like, okay, well, we're trying to problem solve things in real time. You know who's going to help us do that? Throwing the ball to A.J. Brown a ton because the guy's just a stud. You know, with the Bengals, right? Like T. Higgins is this vertical receiver who I think is a solid but not special separator. Like, we're not going to throw those contested balls to T. Higgins uh, on the outside. We're going to design ways to get Jamar Chase, who is a great route runner. We're going to get the ball to him, okay? And, like, Miami's not going, like, troubleshooting in real time, but they are breaking in, like, oh, we have this kick-your-ass run game now in addition to what we're doing in the pass game. Like, let's really work on this and, and perfect this. Well, we're not going to go away from Tyree Kill, so Jalen Waddle's going to take the back seat there. So maybe I'm overreacting a little bit to like the Burrow injury, uh, the the Eagles kind of playing a little eh, so far this season. I just think from like a dynasty perspective, I'm not saying that these guys are bad bets or that like we need to move these guys down our rankings, but like I will say that as long as these guys are pigeonholed in that second receiver position, one there is a little bit more inherent risk to offensive or environment chaos. And two, like the second that you see a Chris Olave or a Garrett Wilson emerge, and I know those guys aren't having perfect seasons for a variety of reasons, but like their ceiling is just so much higher because they can, and Drake London too, who, who you mentioned, like their ceiling is higher because they can become that alpha dog. And I think the path is just clearer for those guys. Whereas like the other players are going to need breaks to have that happen. I guess is where I stand on it. And this is what I end up doing probably that um, because I don't want to rate guys too much lower just based on the fact that they're the one A or the two. But what I will do is I I have I call them matchup players and scheme based players. And hmm. some guys are matchup players in the sense like to me the top twelve guys to me are like Amari Cooper all the way to Justin Jefferson are matchup players. They're going to face the whoever your top corner is in the league right now on third and 12. And the corner's going to know the route that's coming and that it's coming to that guy. And he's playing press man. And he's still probably going to lose that route to Stefan Diggs, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, <laughs> yeah. Tyreek Hill, who Devontae Adams, you know, all those guys. Gabriel Davis is the quintessential scheme player. He's the guy that the defense, that the offense says, we're going to run misdirection. We're going to sneak him out of like the backfield or drag him out. And he's going to get lost behind the defense. And he's the only guy we're planning to throw this ball to because all our resources are put to tricking you. So he gets open or he's like the third read on a long developing route. Hopefully he ran behind somebody but they're not putting him in that third and 12 situation um, knowing that. Whereas, you know, and I look at T Higgins as good as he is. Um, do you really think that Grant Delpit would be able to cover Jamar Chase on a, on a slot, on a slot fade or a, or a, or a sale route? Um, you, you know, they better hope he drops it. That's, that's, yeah. the, that's their hope. They better hope he drops it. Yeah. Uh, but he did well again. He did well enough against T Higgins that that's the yeah. difference to me. I love Grant Delpit. He's one of my favorite players, but I know that he's not a cornerback, you know, and if a safety can cover, if a safety can cover your guy, man to man in the slot, um, a good safety, maybe that's the limit. That's one example of a limit to say the the ceiling's capped here. You know, and that may mean he's capped at your top 15 or just outside your top 12. And yeah. yes, maybe he has years that he's eighth, but I, I would, I know you're the same way. And I, you know, and it's just common in our industry and it's okay. It's just, we've all been through it and we've all been through that stage, but I do privately chuckle when I hear people go and T when I start hearing, well, T Higgins is better than Jamar chase. And I'm like, uh -huh. um, Jamar chase, um, with his legs cut off. Yes. Okay, fine. You know, but no, not in this universe, not in this universe, not in this universe that we live in. Um, no, that, that is actually, I think again, it's, it's sort of turning into a theme of the season for me. So I wanted to heat check that.